For more on the rise of the sharing economy, we speak to Michael Kusumano. He's the professor at the MIT School of Business over there. Welcome to the show. He's also the author of Staying Power, a book yeah. about global management. Joining us live from Boston, Massachusetts. Professor, welcome to the show. Walk us through a little bit about yeah. this sharing of the economy and the peer-to-peer -peer business. Is this something that's, that's new or has technology helped us move along over the last four or five years? Well, it is, it is new in, in where we're seeing the applications. Uh, but actually, the, the technology is pretty old, and it, it's much older than four or five years. Uh, this kind of sharing, in a sense, started with uh, eBay, for example, where an individual could go and, and sell a, a product uh, to anyone. Uh, it's, it's, it's also it's part of the Internet. It's par part of uh, social media. We saw peer to be peer-to-peer -peer music sharing, file sharing 10, 12 years ago. So it's, it's really a gradual buildup. Let, let me give you one example of this, um, this Airbnb. My producer and I, we were talking about this right. earlier. We were looking at people who own houses. And they want to rent out their rooms for the weekend or for the night or for a special event. They put it online. Strangers come in from around the world or in, throughout the country, and they say, I want to rent a room in your house, professor, for $100 a night. And you, you let them have this room for $100 a night. And this apparently is very big business. I haven't done it. I'm not sure if you have. But is that the style that we're going towards now is we're just going to eliminate corporate America or corporate global. And it's just going to be you and I doing business with each other via the Internet. Well, uh, certainly some of that is going on. And it's, uh, it's, it's beyond rooms. It's also sharing your car sharing your bicycle, uh, tra uh, sharing currency. One of the latest uh, uh, of these sharing economies is uh, currency exchange uh, through uh, startups like Bitcoin. But, you know, that has been going on for a while. We've had B&Bs for a long time. The difference now is we have what I, what I write about is platforms that are actually bringing together people that have these underutilized assets, and they turn them into a service uh, to people that want to use these assets but don't have the money or don't or don't really want to buy these assets like buy a home or buy a car or buy a bicycle so again it's it's a it's an ongoing trend but it's uh, it's facilitated by the internet and and certainly smartphones because we carry them around with us all the time and we can go anywhere find anyone uh, almost instantly with that technology here in um in Washington, D.C., and I imagine over in Boston as well, there's a couple options if you want to share cars. So you, you sign up, you, you go, and right. you pick up a car randomly on a street, and you can drive it wherever you want. It'll charge you either for the time or the distance. And this has, has picked up around the country here and also globally as well. These trends, is it going to be more of a sort of short-term fab, if you will, or is it going to be something longer term over the next 20 years that we're simply going to have to adopt to this motto because it makes financial sense for people? Yeah, no, I, I think it's here to stay, just like uh, eBay is here to stay or Google Search is here to stay. Uh, but in some cases, governments are stepping in. So, for example, the insurance is not always clear in these instances if an individual uh, rents uh, a car to another person. Some insurance companies prohibit that. So that's where companies come in that actually are the intermediary. Um, now, we've had Zipcar for quite a few years, and that's a little different from an individual renting out a car. Uh, but as I said, some cases there's issues of insurance and security uh, and a, a company coming in as a platform to sort of guarantee that the person lending is authentic and the person who wants to rent is authentic uh, and, can, and the company can provide insurance and security is part of the uh, solution. And I think uh, companies have found ways to make that happen. And uh, a lot of these, these startup companies, they get venture funding, which they use to buy insurance in advance, for example, and uh, advertise. Because you, you can't actually have a service like this that's successful without people signing up to offer their goods for, for rentals. So there's, it's a big, bit of a chicken and an egg problem. So it requires a little bit of venture capital to get going. But it's, it's going pretty strong, and it's a, it's a strong feature, at least of the U.S. economy, and we see a bit of it in Europe. We don't see so much of it in China or Japan, for example, where I've also looked at this. All right. um, but in the U.S., it's strong.
Professor, thank you very much. MIT, this is a, a fascinating topic, and we're going to monitor developments there. Thank you again for joining us live okay, from thank you. Boston.